Hey everybody, welcome to the TAP channel. Today we're discussing what it is that we're going to show you in this upcoming video. This is an introduction to the testing we did on our TAP DOA versus Bee Stinger Micro Hex Stabilizer. Now this isn't a test to determine how accurate it can make a bow. Accuracy is subjective and also is relative to the skill and experience of the shooter. It isn't to measure vibration. Uh, we've had many, many, uh, countless almost, examples of how well our stabilizer is functional and vibration. It's not related to that. It's related to the design and the structure of the products. We're going to be looking at the materials themselves. What's the purpose of this? It's not to try to make ourselves appear superior or it's not to try to equate uh, ourselves with a larger company. We're not saying that. It, it's up to you, it's up to the, the customer, it's up to the supporter of our company to really make those determinations on, on how they feel we stack up. If they own the product, they can make those calls. But what we want to show you, what I really strive to show people is that the design is well thought out, that the materials are top notch, and that they equip themselves extremely well in comparison to other products on the market. The reason for choosing the V-Stinger is the availability of it, is the fact that we frequently are mentioned in the same conversations, and it's a very popular product. Nothing against them whatsoever. So what you're going to see after this is excerpts of that test. And the type of test that was done is a, a load test. It's looking at ultimately what uh, the level of deflection the stabilizer is showing. We're just expressing that in units as far as how far it bent. Uh, to take it to the point of truly expressing it in scientific terms is beyond the scope of what we're doing here. But we're just showing you under a given load these two products are comparing as such. And we did the very best possible to make it a very objective and equal test. You'll see that. They're oriented on the same fixture. It's a steel I-beam that we have a block mounted to that these can thread into. Then we determined how much carbon needed to be used in our DOA model so that we could be certain that the exposed area on the stabilizer, which would be handling the brunt of this of this load was essentially the same as, as the V-Singer. So they're equal in that respect. Now they've been cut apart since then, as you can see. It's the point of that where I'm showing you the material. So I want to get into the dimensions that these, that these products have. This is, I don't know what, what their specific weave is that they've, they've used here with this carbon, uh, but it is very thick wall. It's about 0 0.100, so it's about 100 thousandths of an inch in thickness. The outer diameter is approximately half an inch, so it's a very thin outer diameter. We have a much thinner wall, so I'll go up close and you can see that there. We can also see uh, Bee Stinger's wall here on this one cutoff portion. You can see it here. And then I also have a small chunk. It was cut out to be one inch in length exactly. We have that from each of ours. And uh, I haven't quoted, I haven't told you yet what the thickness of ours is, but you can see it's considerably thinner. So what it is, it's 60 thousandths of an inch wall thickness. We also use a 3K weave. So I will tell people what that is. Uh, it is considered a high modulus carbon. People throw these terms around a lot, I know, especially in the industry. People might not even have any idea what it is that's being referred to there. What does high modulus mean? Ultimately, modulus is referring to the modulus of elasticity. So a higher modulus of elasticity means that you have a more rigid, more resistant to bending product. So we're using a high modulus fiber uh, tube. I assume that they are using a relatively high modulus as well. And given the fact that they have this level of thickness, then you could assume, yes, that it is fairly high modulus. Now the test itself is going to demonstrate how far each of these products bent under that load. That load was about 43 and a half pounds. Why did we choose that? Uh, for a variety of reasons. One, I thought it was a fairly extreme amount of weight to put on a stabilizer. 
two, I, it was available. Uh, we had it in terms of weight plates. We could get that, we'd get that amount. But I thought that would demonstrate on camera a sufficient amount of travel, and it did. And that, so that worked out really well. So that was a pretty ideal way to use. So a couple more things about the design uh, and why I don't think it's a fair thing to suggest that, that our design is inferior to really anybody out there, is the way our outserts work. These are very high strength. Now this is, a, this is a aluminum, so 6061, which is a fairly common grade of aluminum, not the strongest grade necessarily, but it is in dimensions which give it a lot of strength. The dimensions are such that it covers about six tenths of the tube, six tenths of an inch, and then the rest is available to be threaded inside with the female threading. And that provides you with a lot of strength through this portion. So we see no flex whatsoever in that. That is not at all where you will have any of the flex occur in this test. The flex occurs all through the tube. Now to get back to the high modulus aspect, why is it that people are seeking this in a stabilizer? Why is it that companies are offering that? High modulus resists flexing, so you can put more weight on it. It will provide a more resistant to bending through the shot uh, response to, to energy dispersion. It may not feel as soft uh, at times on vibration. But that being said, a lot of people feel this is a very dead stabilizer. I often say that's not my goal. I never design with that necessarily in mind. I do realize, though, people want that. It's, it's something that they do like to have as a secondary benefit in their stabilizers. They want it to absorb vibration. So the Bee Stinger comes with an external damper. And you notice I said damper and not dampener? Damper is the correct word in this case. You are damping the oscillation. You are damping this uh, actual excessive energy, this resonance that is, that is coming through this, this stabilizer. So we got, we got these two products. They, they were very similar in how they responded. And I think that you'll find that we looked probably as good as could be expected here. We actually showed a little more strength, and the test will reveal that. We showed a little bit more strength than the Bee Stinger did. Now why is that? We have a thinner wall. Well, we also have a larger diameter. We have 5 eighths of an inch outer diameter. That's critical to keep in mind because outer diameter is a tremendous factor in determining the ultimate strength of a tube. So it exponentially increases strength as you go up in diameter. So you can go with a much thinner wall and go with a slightly larger diameter. And what do you get as the end product? You get a just as strong, if not stronger, as we saw in this case, and you get lighter per inch. Now this is interesting to hear too. So the micro hex stabilizer comes in at, like I said, 0 0.100 wall thickness. But what does it come in at in weight per inch? So the carbon tube itself, even though it's half inch outer diameter, comes in at 0.124 ounces per inch. The DOA material, same one inch length, comes in at 0 0.096 ounces per inch. So it is notably lighter, and that will be felt, especially as you get out in longer bars. You will definitely start to see the, the benefit of this reduced weight. So that more or less sums up what we need to cover as far as what the test does, what you're going to see in it, and what the goals in the design are. The last thing I should talk about is, and I, I kind of circumvented this, I was talking about Bee Stinger's damping. We use damping as well, but we use internal damping. We have vortex material. You may have heard that term or you may have seen it on our website. Vortex material is a proprietary formula that I developed back in 2016 and has been used in every one of our stabilizers since. It absorbs a good bit of vibration. It helps to kill out any residual uh, post-shot resonance. That's what gives it the good feel, but we don't need external items hanging off the stabilizer to accomplish that. All right, that covers what I needed to do. You guys, I hope you keep watching and go to titaniumarchingproducts.com, go to our Instagram page, 
titanium underscore archery underscore products. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash titanium archery products, all one word. I tremendously appreciate the support over the years. We're in year five and a half at this point, actually a little past that. It's been a very unique and interesting ride. I like what I do. I'm going to point out here a Rack Daddy shirt. Thanks, guys, for the shirt. They're local to us. Good guys. If you don't already follow them, check them out, too. And their show. A lot of good people out there in this business. We try to maintain contact with those people. Take care. Stay tapped out. All right, we have the tap DOA lined up. The only thing that has to be done here is add the strap. Once the strap's on, the 43 and a half pound load will be placed on, and we'll see actually how much. And I'm hoping you guys that are viewing are going to watch along too. You'll be able to see the indicator go down. We don't want to see too much, but what is too much? We really don't know. So it's pretty interesting when you don't know what you're going to get. And we ended up with, looks like about five sixteenths of an inch. Well, yeah, about five sixteenths of an inch of deflection occurred there. That's not a lot, but again, I really don't know what necessarily is a lot because this is a fairly new uh, procedure we're doing here. 40 pounds, 43 and a half pounds, again, total weight. Is that a lot to put on a stabilizer? Well, I mean, how many times are you going to find somebody doing this? And we don't have a reference point, but it seems pretty good. And then we'll move on to the B stinger here. Again, no personal uh, agenda, no personal attack on any other product that's on the market. Just a way to show you that, hey, TAP puts good materials into their products too. That's all we're really showing you. And you can have confidence that our products are gonna hold up well. And they'll, they'll serve you they'll serve you nicely in the woods or whether it's on the 3D range. I mean, that's really kind of the, the gist of all of this, is just showing you that. I have a lot of passion for what I do. I have a lot of confidence in the products and what I do here. And I want to be able to demonstrate that to people. Okay, so we got the stinger lined up. And we're going to check to see if we are zeroed out the same place. And yeah, pretty impressive. It's, it's about dead on. The pointer is a dead on spot from where, the, where the, the DOA was. And right back to putting the weight in place. I remember that. Previous re uh, measurement with a DOA, 5 16th of an inch. Same load, put on with the same level of care. What kind of deflection will we get? And, well, I can see where the 5/16th mark is, and it looks like I'll have to zoom in later on on a larger screen, but it looks like we're about 1 16th of an inch past that, which would mean we're at 3 eighths. 5/16th, of course, is 1 16th under 3 eighths. So that would mean the deep the B finger actually deflected a little further than the DOA did under the same load. 